craft beer. Craft beer. Craft beer. Craft beer. It's really nice to drink. It's better ingredients, different flavors. It's just so much fun. It's totally American. It's flavor. I absolutely love it. It's pairing. We get to experiment and make great beer because of it. From the town of Ithaca to the entire Finger Lakes region in upstate New York and beyond to a national scale, the growth of the craft beer industry has expanded drastically over the last few years. Dan Mitchell wondered how Ithaca, New York, a town with a strong sense of community and a passion for local products, had such a booming local wine scene but no local brewery. His idea for the Ithaca Beer Company began in 1995, but it wasn't until 1997 that the original brewing system was purchased. After months of renovations and setting up equipment, Dan and his small team were able to officially open the brewery in December of 1998 and start producing Ithaca beer. Now, 14 years later, Dan and the Ithaca Beer Company are in the process of expanding their facilities, adding a beer garden, a restaurant, hops fields, and increasing production to match their continuously growing brand. They are preparing for a grand opening of the newly renovated location in the fall of 2012. We kind of had a couple phases of Ithaca beer, so I was realizing this morning that it was, it was almost 16 years to the day um, that I actually started contracting this beer from another brewery. There are four distinct markets within the craft beer industry, brew pubs, microbreweries, contract brewing companies, and regional craft breweries. Ithaca Beer Company is a craft brewery. The National Brewers Association, an American trade group tasked with the promotion of craft beer, defines a craft brewer as a small, independent, traditional brewery with an annual production of six million barrels of beer or less. People are realizing that there's more to beer than just uh, you know, yellow foamy stuff. It has taste, it has character, you know, the, and it's out there and you can get it now. And people like it. So. The beer market was actually really sluggish. It was, uh, you had two main players, Pete's Wicked Ale and Sam Adams. And uh, then there were like Rhino Chasers and Saranac, but really it had been on a major decline. A lot of it has changed just because people are more aware that craft beer is out there. And I think um, it's really the new generations, the new drinkers that are coming in are so exposed to craft that the norm isn't necessarily the Bud Miller and Coors. The norm now is almost like Sam Adams, Sierra, Harpoon, like a lot of the beers that that you come across as you're, as you're starting to drink. Before the Prohibition era in the 1870s, there were more than 3,200 breweries in the United States, more than there are today. After Prohibition, the number of craft breweries slowly increased. In 1978, there were only 42 brewing companies in the country. The past three decades have seen a dramatic rise in the number of craft breweries in the United States. In 1980, there were only eight. Today, there are more than 2,100. This includes 350 new breweries that have opened since June 2011 alone. Craft brews currently provide more than 100,000 jobs in the United States and 11.5 million barrels of craft beer were sold last year. The craft brewing industry revenue increased by 15% in 2011. Today, 97% of the craft breweries in the U.S. are small and independent. On average, most Americans live within 10 miles of a brewery. But even with this continued growth, the craft beer industry captured less than 10% of the overall national beer sales. There are only about 50 non-craft brewers in the United States, which control 90% of the market. I think what's so attractive to people about craft beer and about going out and doing quote unquote beer tourism is that people want to be able to try as many different varieties of craft beer as they can. So the more that there are, the greater the good for all of the breweries involved. I don't think that in the near future we're gonna have any concerns with market saturation. Beer is made from four basic ingredients, barley, hops, water, and yeast. The production of craft beer is a process unique to each brewery. It comes with a personal touch. We start out with uh, malted barley and we crush it and you need to do that in order to kind of extract the sugars from it uh, and then we mix it we steep it in hot water which is called mashing and that's kind of like it's kind of like making tea uh, so we let it steep in this big ton for a while 
And after that, we want to filter off the liquid. So now it's kind of like uh, a coffee pot. So we have, a, we have a strainer in the bottom of this big ton, and we start to pump the liquid out of the bottom. So it's just like making a pot of coffee. After straining the liquid from the bottom of the tank, the sugars are rinsed from the barley. The excess liquid, called wort, is put into a boil kettle where hops and different flavors are added. After boiling the beer, it's put through an inline filter and chillers. Once cool, the beer is fermented. It's then put into conditioning tanks where carbonation occurs. Those tanks we put in a keg and then we're ready to serve. We can go from brew day to drinking it in minimum of six days. The increased interest in craft beer is often attributed to consumer demand for more interesting and better tasting products. Craft brewing often highlights experimentations with flavors and blending seasonal ingredients and local products. I think a lot of um, the craft beer movement is a kind of like hybrid of like just local foods movements in general and I think that's another reason the local like beer movement in Ithaca is so strong. Craft beer drinkers are typically people that are between the ages of 25 and 45 so you've actually got a, a pretty good range of um, age there. Um, but they tend to be people who are well educated, um, people who are um, a little more um, affluent, um, have more disposable income, um, so they're willing to pay a little bit of a higher price um, for their beer. You know, a lot of people that are just turning 21 that like want to like know how beer is created and like want to like be more informed and then you have you know people in their mid-20s who have been brewing and like you know, already into it. You have people in their, you know, mid 40s who are, you know, have been brewing for tons of years. Within the craft beer community, there is a true sense of camaraderie and friendship among the brewers who are working hard to find their own respective markets. You can call a lot of different pubs and breweries in the area or around the country and ask them questions and they're more than happy to answer questions for you. Also, the brewers often get together and and do collaborations. It's a very friendly industry. Uh, you know, it's not corporate or cutthroat or anything like that. When you're drinking beer, you're having a good time. I, you know, very rarely do you meet nasty beer drinkers. It just doesn't happen. Well, it's a huge help to have, you know, other friendly brewers in town. As far as competition when it comes to customers, I think we each fill a niche pretty well. It's really funny, sometimes people come in and like, will be carrying like Ithaca Cascazilla and they're like, oh, you're like carrying your competitors. And it's really not viewed in that, that sense at all. Ithaca's a very uh, supportive community, especially for kind of a fun business like this. We have really great relationships with all of like the local breweries. I think we have such a young population and kind of an, an outgoing population who want to try new things, um, which is what we're all about. What I like about the craft beer movement is is people taking it into their own hands to create something that's new and innovative and unique. And that's what all craft beer is trying to do, is do something innovative at different steps, whether it's hops, um, malt, um, in the production. There's all different steps where you can kind of do something different and unique and make great beer because of it. I try to go to as many breweries as I can, get all kinds of craft beer, and then I think you get a lot of different people out here, so you get good crowds, and I, I don't know, I, mean, I, I love it. So. Just the fact of having almost 40 different breweries here gives them the opportunity to try all of these different craft beers, which our area has been trying to be um, known for it, so I think it's just a great opportunity. The state of New York is home to the third largest number of craft brewers after California and Oregon. The New York industry consists of more than 100 breweries, which account for an economic impact of more than $13 billion annually. The largest concentration of breweries is in the Finger Lakes region, with more than one-third of the state's total. You have like a huge like local wine industry, and like that's a huge part of our tourism here. Um, so I think beer is just like a natural kind of progression. Wine pairings everybody's kind of used to, but now more and more, People are starting to realize that you can pair great beer with, with great food. Um, the local movement on food helps a lot because people start realizing that um, there's actually better food out there. So as soon as you start talking about quality of food, you start talking about the quality of the drink, and you inevitably start talking about craft beer. As of October 2012, there were 37 brewery locations along the Finger Lake Beer Trail. 
an over 200 mile stretch of land in upstate New York, 31 of which are active and six of which will open in the next six months. There are also 15 additional breweries in different stages of planning slated to open in the region soon. I think people really walk away from their experience after they've gone out and they've, you know, done a portion of the beer trail and they've gone out and they've visited a handful of breweries. I think they walk away with with just a really a greater appreciation obviously for the craft of brewing. Beer displays the creativity and passion of its maker and the complexity of its ingredients. Those brewers must have a willingness to experiment and a passion for the product. Uh, I found my dad's old home brewing kit and I kind of snuck it away without him noticing and we brewed a few batches of beer uh, and we did it incognito for quite a while without any of our parents knowing. Um, and so that was kind of like our little mischievous thing to do uh, while we were in high school. I never thought I would have been a brewer as, you know, my, to support myself. Um, it was just kind of like a pipe dream for me. Um, I decided to not go back to school. Um, and I really only had a dishwashing job. So I took that job with the hopes of, you know, just kind of being in the restaurant and being around it. And then I was basically just really obnoxious and kept pushing for any sort of anything with the brewing. I was like, you know, I'll wash kegs, I'll do that, just, just anything to kind of get involved. And then, so I eventually got a few shifts brewing uh, under the watch of the, the former brewer. Um, and then I just kind of eventually took over more and more responsibility until I became the head brewer. Many of those small brewers are being recognized for their hard work as well. On July 18, 2012, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a law designed to strengthen and help grow the state's vibrant craft beer industry. The legislation protects a tax benefit for small breweries that produce beer in New York, exempts breweries that produce small batches of beer from paying an annual state liquor authority fee, and creates a farm brewery license that will allow craft brewers to expand their operations through opening restaurants or selling new products. I definitely think we're going to see a lot of farms that don't presently grow hops start growing hops um, because New York State actually the soil that we have here is the perfect environment for growing hops. I always try to source local um, but I also feel that local has, um, has a responsibility to bring you the best that you can find. So I'm not an advocate for needing to do local if it's inadequate. I think the local producers need to give you the best product and then you're proud to, to um, serve products from your local community. Craft beer drinkers see it as something to be enjoyed, shared and celebrated. Looking back at the last 30 years, it's apparent how the culture and community that comes with craft beer continues to grow. For Dan Mitchell and the Itka Beer Company, the process of expanding has been a long time coming. After months of planning and construction, on October 11, 2012, the tap room at the new location opened, a new marker of growth for the company. The Ithaca Beer Company currently distributes beer in seven states and with their new operations, plans to expand even more. 14 years we've been brewing in Ithaca. We've been growing the business by 25% uh, a year and uh, we finally got this facility up and running, which is really our first home. It was a real challenge. You know, Ithaca is tough. Ithaca, you have to prove yourself for a while. So that's what's nice about this place is we finally have that really kind of cool spot that they can come visit. For the future of craft beer, I think it's very bright. We're going to see even more than what we've already seen from people. Um, we're going to see more collaboration, more unique, interesting beers coming out. Even though it seems like it's been around for a little while, it can only get bigger. Well, the way I always describe it is uh, after as many years as I've been doing this, it's still one of the funnest things is to walk into a bar, and I usually don't have my Ithaca beer gear on, and you sit down to someone, they order an Ithaca beer, they try, and they're like, wow, this beer is delicious. You know, and I just sit quietly and that's all I'm doing.